All right, welcome folks. Thanks to those of you who are here live, those of you watching on the recording. Good to have you as well. So this is going to be our leader draw for season seven of Sephora AI Survivor. A uh, quick background to uh, the way this works is we have the 52 leaders that are in Civilization IV. Uh, they are divided into three groups. We have our Pool 1 leaders, we have our Pool 2 leaders, and then we have a whole bunch of unseated leaders. Uh, the way this works is it is based on the standings from the previous, uh, I don't think I have that on this spreadsheet, but it's based on the standings from the previous years of Sephora AI Survivor. The leaders that have scored the best in previous years, the top eight of them are in pool one. We will draw a pool one leader into each game. And then the group that are the next eight best based on past years of scoring, they're in pool two. And then everybody else who has not done as well is an unseated leader, and then they'll be drawn into the remaining games. Um, half the games have four leaders, half the games have, or half the games have six leaders and half the games have seven leaders. Um, yeah, still find it funny we skipped Pearl Island and All-Stars. Um, this logo was made by Coding Cajun and uh, jumped ahead to this season and uh, it looked really cool and I appreciated having that. So I was fine to just go with that. All right, with no further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start by drawing our pool one leader for game one. So we need to go number one through eight and generate it according to random.org. So drum roll. I'm not gonna do this for everyone so to do this 52 times. Number eight, Stalin has been drawn into game one as our pool one leader. Now opinions are mixed on Stalin. Some people like this leader, some people do not. I know that there's some people who think that he uh, he's a returning champion, was I think season three champion, had an incredible run, uh, went made it back to the championship game another time as well. But I know there's some people who think that this guy is not actually a very good leader and that he just got lucky. The evidence is sort of out as far as how good he is. Certainly has had some really good seasons, also had some ones that weren't so great. All right, next up, we got to draw a pool two leader. So from this group here, one through eight again, four. Ga <laughs> oh, this is great. We've drawn Gandhi as our pool two leader. Talk about two leaders that are completely different in terms of their personalities. Oh boy. So Gandhi is the game's most peaceful leader, um, infamous for not bothering to defend himself in these... Uh, <laughs> in these games. Gandhi is the highest peace weight in the game at 10. He's ultra pacifistic. If he gets left alone, he has a really good odds to win a cultural victory. But if he doesn't get left alone, it's uh, it's not great. <laughs> Do we get extra points if we lock in first to die? No, um, I won't. I'm, I, I'll make up the picking contest entry form uh, later today. But uh, no, you don't get bonus points for picking Gandhi first to die already. Still, this is great. We've got a great contrast between our, our pool one and pool two leaders here. All right, so now we got to draw four leaders from the unseated pool. So one through 36. Let's see who we've got. 23. We've drawn Pericles. Okay, this is good news for Gandhi. Drawing another, oops, not the wildcard game. Drawing another high piece weight leader is good news for Team Gandhi. So this is another leader that's very pacifistic, um, also likes to chase after cultural victories, and is someone who just is another high piece weight leader to help out Gandhi. All right, yeah, Gandhi, Pericles. I mean, we could draw some other high piece weight leaders here. You never know. Equally, far, yeah, Pericles is, that's true. Pericles is as equally far away peace rise from Gandhi as from Stalin. It's true. Pericles is six. Stalin is two. Gandhi is 10. All right. We got to draw three more leaders into this game. Number 13, Hammerab. Oh, wow. Another high peace weight leader. This could actually be lead to kind of a boring game if we get a whole ton of high peace weight leaders. Uh, Hammurabi, another leader who mostly likes to sit back and build. Although he's not quite as pacifistic as, you know, Gandhi, but no one is. So, yeah. All right. Well, I will say that Hammurabi is one of our less interesting leaders in the game. He has never really done all that much that stood out in past leaders. But, yeah, this is shaping up to be 
a good Gandhi game and a not so good Stalin game, but we still have two more leaders here. Uh, so let's see who we draw for the next two. We could draw two more low piece weight leaders here. 15, Isabella. Okay, so this is a bit more of a wild card. Isabella, religious fanatic, obsessed with uh, all things religious, and someone who is going to found a religion, and will probably, Gandhi will probably found another religion, and then that will create some religious tension, depending on how their religion spread. Yeah, Izzy and Gandhi not necessarily going to like each other. So she's only middling in terms of peace weight. I think she's a... Uh, I think she's a six for peace weight. She's either six or four, I think. Someone probably has it in the chat. So she's not especially high or low in terms of peace weight, but she is obsessed with religion. Okay, six. Thank you. I knew she was somewhere around there. Definitely add some spice to this game, for sure, just based on her religious nuttery. All right, and then our last leader. We got one more. So one to 33, 27, and we have... <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> and then we drew shaka as our last leader in this game <laughs> all right well just to spice things up a little bit um one of the game's most aggressive warmongers uh probably amongst the true insane warmongers shaka has been one of the most effective ones he's certainly been more effective than the um like genghis khans and um ragnars and um montezumas of the world all right that's an interesting group you know it was looking for a little bit like we might have this boring builder game but then the last two leaders definitely shook things up a good bit all right so for this game stalin gandhi hammurabi isabella pericles shaka that's a fun group to be sure Really fun group. It's very balanced, as Pindicator said, very balanced in terms of piece weight spreads. Um, <laughs> the map will definitely be important. We'll look at the map after um, after we draw all the leaders, and we'll take a look at that one. There is a sorting function in this cell. I, there probably is. I'm sure that there's a way to do this more efficiently, but um, I don't know. I, I, I need to take a couple seconds to talk about each leader anyway, so um, yeah. Uh, some of you are definitely, I have no doubt, better at Excel than I am, although I'm I'm reasonably decent at using it. Okay. All right. Well, that's just one game. We got to draw seven more games here, don't we? So let's go ahead and do game number two. So we need a pool one leader and a pool two leader. So we have seven of them in the pot right now. Let's go ahead and see. We've got leader number six. Ah, our defending champion, Mansa Musa, is the draw for this one. Yeah, so Mansa was one of the leaders that we weren't... I wasn't sure if he was going to be as good as he had been in some of the earlier seasons because I do think he was one of the leaders that was hurt the most by switching over from everybody gets all the deity free text to only having their, their actual two starting texts. Since Mansa's starting texts, uh, Mining and Wheel, are not especially good. But he uh, he really showed me last season. He had an amazing run. Won, uh, won, won the, I mean, won the championship, won all three games he showed up in. Uh, won his opening round and um, playoff game very convincingly. Now, got pretty lucky in the championship game. When we did the alternate histories, he only won, I think, one time in the next 20 playthroughs or something like that. So he did get pretty lucky. But Mansa's a great leader. He's, he's one of the best economic leaders in the game. His one real drawback is his high piece weight. His piece weight's, what, nine? So if he ever can get a field where he doesn't get dogpiled, he's a very strong leader to win. Am I doing the alternate histories? Yes, but usually the alternate histories I don't do until the season's over. So you will see them eventually, but um, you know, not for a long time because <laughs> the season hasn't even started yet. Okay, we got to draw a pool two leader. So again, seven names in the pot. Who are we going to get? Number five, Suri. Okay, Suri Varman. Interesting. You know, I, I'm not quite sure what to make of Suri. Not quite sure. Um, he's just one of those leaders who has certainly done well, although he does have a lot of... He has a lot of second place finishes, but it's like he hasn't really stood out as, like, super strong. He's just kind of, like, there in a lot of games. He's definitely above average, I mean, like, pool two, I think pool two is, like, the appropriate place for him. He's clearly well above average, but, like, he's not in the Justinian, Wynakopak, Mansa Musa club either. 
So he's like somewhere in between. So um, yeah, an interesting, interesting individual. As usual, a lot's going to depend on where people start out. All right, who else is going to be in the group? We have to drive five leaders from the unseated pool this time. Five of them. Okay, finished second twice, three first place finishes. Okay, I had I, I thought he had more second place finishes than that. I might be thinking of some other leaders. All right, still a ton of names to draw. 13, so we have drawn Hannibal. Okay, now Hannibal's another leader I know opinion is divided on. I know that people have mixed feelings about this guy the dis the sula discord for ai survivor there was quite a bit of discussion about this uh individual some people saying that they thought he was quite good and had been unlucky and then some people saying that his wins actually had not been over very good fields and he wasn't really that impressive um so some mixed opinions yeah two two financial leaders already in this game if we draw a third or a fourth it's going to be a really uh heavy econ game <clears throat> Hannibal's also kind of infamous because last season he um, got this starting position where he walked his free extra deity settler into the jungle and then spent like 80 turns building a <laughs> spent like 80 turns building another settler in a size one city that couldn't grow because it was so unhealthy from all the jungle tiles. Yeah, he really, really flubbed it last season. Pretty, pretty ridiculous um, in a way that I was not expecting when I set up the map. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't do that again this year. All right, three. Well, we got another builder AI. We've been drawing a fair number of builder AIs so far. Augustus. So Augustus had a good season last year. Um, I know he made it to the playoffs and had a really good opening round game. And I think he was on Antisocial's. Um, I think he was on Antisocial's fantasy team, and he got like a lot of points from Augustus. High piece weight leader, likes to build wonders, but also is Rome. So he has the Praetorian, which like gives him a little bit of extra punch, which is why I think he's better than some of the other builder AIs. Like he's clearly a cut above Hammurabi or Roosevelt, some of the other leaders that are like in that otherwise similar. And it's mostly just because he gets the Praetorian, which is such a good unit. Chances for Mansa looking up, perhaps. Yeah, very divided piece weights. One, two, eight, and nine, definitely. <clears throat> so... Are we going to get more on the high piece weight leader side or the low piece weight leader side? That's going to dictate a lot of what happens. So three again, three two times in a row. And this time it's Bismarck. Okay, another mostly builderish AI in the form of uh, Bismarck. But uh, only middling piece weight. Oops, only middling piece weight, not high piece weight. I believe he's six. He was another one of the AIs who had done nothing for the early years of AI Survivor and then had a good run last year. Well, a good opening run. Uh, out of all the opening round games, he had the highest score in the alternate histories. He had like 102 points or something in the alternate histories, which is an insane amount. Um, and he was on my fantasy team. So, yeah, he scored me a lot of fantasy points last year. So, yeah, a mostly builder AI whose sole tech flavor is military. Yes, an odd, odd uh, individual. I would say that it's a combo that doesn't really work all that well, but he had one good game last year with a really good starting position. All right, next leader, 13. And, thir oh, wow, <laughs> Mansa getting some good luck here. Lincoln, another builder AI. Boy, the, the Mansa Musa to win opening round game definitely is... Uh, the odds of that going up in the sports books, to be sure. So <laughs> that is definitely good news if he has another leader like Lincoln in the game. So who do we, who does he have here? Mansa's got Augustus, Lincoln, and to some extent Bismarck. And then we've got Surrey and Hannibal with these very low piece weights to go in there. 70-point <laughs> bid for Mansa already. Maybe, maybe. We'll see. I mean, he could be stuck in between Surrey and... Um, um, Who's the other? And Hannibal. It's always possible. <laughs> Come on, Monty. Yeah, Monty slides in. Monty is 15 right now, if you're curious. All right, so we got to do last leader. Are we going to get another builder AI, or do we get a low piece weight warmonger to shake things up? What do we get? 24. And we have drawn Suleiman. Okay. Somewhere in between. Uh, definitely more on the militaristic side, but not one of the true insane uh, leaders. Not one of the true maniacs. Um, I've always felt that Suleiman's traits don't really make a lot of sense. Imperialistic, philosophical, definitely pulling in two completely different directions. So, yeah, as I said, I don't quite 
it doesn't quite make a lot of sense to me. All right, I think this is alphabetical. There we go. All right, so let's just look at the full game. Now that we've got all seven of them drawn. So Mansa from pool one, Suri Varman from pool two, and then Augustus, Bismarck, Hannibal, Lincoln, Suleiman. Interesting. Suleiman is Catherine plus Mehmed minus everything exciting about both. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. I suspect Mats is going to be a pretty big favorite in that game, especially because he was so strong last year. Now, obviously, performance does not carry over from year to year. There's no, like, momentum or anything like that. But uh, after watching him do so well last year and having quite a few high piece weight leaders in that game, suspect he's going to be the the favorite. Uh, thank you for that, Dr. Warclam. One, two, four, six, eight, nine, nine. Wow, he drew. He got another leader with nine piece weight. So there's one leader in the game with 10. That's Gandhi. There's only two with nine. That's Mansa and Lincoln, and they're in the same game together. Whew. Yeah, pretty good stuff. All right. Well, two games down, six to go. Oh, Elizabeth's also nine? Okay. I thought she was eight. Okay. I forgot she was nine. I thought she was eight. I guess I'm wrong. I trust you that you've got that. Wait, Hattie's nine as well? Okay. Okay. Well, then I'm just wrong. I'm just wrong then. <laughs> All right. So we have to go one through six for our remaining pool one leaders. Who's our pool one leader for game number three? It is four, which means Justinian, one of our more popular leaders, the uh, winner of season one of AI Survivor. Came close to winning. Uh, I know he made it back to the championship game. Has come close in at least one other year. He did not make it through the opening round last year in season six. Well, two, it was two years ago, but last season in season six. The alternate histories had him as the top scoring AI in that game, though. So he was pretty unlucky not to make it out of the opening round game. Um, because he was, when we replayed the map 20 times, he was actually the strongest leader on the board. He just did not have a especially good game. Um so yes, all the high piece weight leaders being drawn early, it does mean we're going to have a at least one of these games is going to be ridiculous because it's going to be all low piece weight maniacs because we've pulled so many of the high piece weight leaders out quickly. All right, well, Justinian loves his religion. Um, medium, uh, he's piece weight four, I think. Loves his religion. Uh, does not declare war at please, which is his other noteworthy trait. Okay, and pool two leader who's going to join him is... Six, Zara. Okay, well, they were in the same game last year, and they're in in the game, in the same opening round game again. Zara just barely slipped into the group of pool two leaders. I think he had like just enough points to make it back into the group. Um, he scored almost all of his points in season one. Has not done a whole lot since then. He did have uh, a second place finish last year, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, they were the top two from season one. That's right. Yeah, they've been in a lot of games together, haven't they? Well, here they are matched up again. I feel like we've seen these guys together in like four different games so far, something like that. But anyway, yeah, Zara, Zara's kind of confusing as well. Creative, organized. He's had some games where he's looked awesome, and he's had some games where he was terrible. There was the year in Season 5 where Alexander eliminated him on like turn 75 or something insane. So he's had both really high performances and some really low performances too. All right. Well, now we've got to draw four leaders from the unseated pool. Well, let's get get to work on that. Number seven. All right, we are drawing De Gaulle. <laughs> probably one of the worst leaders in AI Survivor. I know he won an opening round game, but he's probably still one of the worst uh, leaders. He had one game in season three where he won the opening round, and he has basically done nothing since then. Um has a piece weight of zero because the designers apparently were doing some anti-French thing that they thought was funny. And um, also has like a really high score to vassal himself to another AI, although we turn off vassal states for this competition. I mean, look, anyone can win a game. Absolutely. Anyone can win a game in um, AI Survivor if they get good map set up, if the diplomacy breaks their way. But I do think he's one of the worst leaders <laughs> for this setup. Anyway, likes his wonders. Very high build wonder percentage. Um, an untrustworthy leader as well. Okay. Um, so next we have 1 to 26. 24. Victoria. Okay. Financial leader for you. Another leader who had done absolutely nothing until last season. And then she managed to win her opening round game last year. 
largely because she was able to settle 17 cities without getting attacked. And people, we were, when we watched the game, we we're like, wow, this is really weird. I wonder if that's going to happen in the alternate histories. And the answer was no, that did not happen in the alternate histories. She did not get to settle 17 cities without getting attacked. Um, she actually only won the game, I think, twice in the alternate histories. So I think she only, yeah, she definitely was, she was well behind um, Justinian. By the way, there's a lot of leaders that are back from the opening round. Justinian, Zara, Victoria, all in the same opening round game last year. And now they're backing it again. So interesting, interesting. It always is funny when, uh, I mean, this is all just randomness, right? We have the pool one, we have the pool two, and then it's just random. But like, anytime you draw random numbers, you can start making up narratives. It's, it's like in... Uh, <laughs> In real sports, you make up the narratives about like these players match up against this player, this team against this team. We get to do the same thing here, even though it's all fictitious. It's literally just narratives we're making up off the top of our head, but it's a lot of fun re regardless. Like, oh, it's a grudge match. Justinian and Zara, they're going at it again. <laughs> even though they're just computer personalities. It's a lot of fun. Okay, 18. Uh, all right, here we go. <clears throat> Another financial leader, but the financial leader is Ragnar. Uh, one of the game's craziest AIs has had very little success. He's gotten some random kills. He had one second place finish, I think, back in season two. Um, he's too aggressive for his own good overall. Uh, he's just way too militaristic. Um, but it's going to be fun to put him in a game with um, Victoria <laughs> and then also De Gaulle here. Yeah, this could be a this could be a wild map. It is the two worst performing financial leaders in the competition. So that we've got a high piece weight leader in Victoria, and we've got a very low piece weight leader in Ragnar, and then also De Gaulle, and then Justinian and Zara are like in the middle, roughly. And then one more, one more. Who's our last entry here? One. <laughs> Alexander. Okay. All right. Well, um, so this game got a lot wilder with our last two draws of Alex and Ragnar for the last two spots. <laughs> At first, we're like, oh, it's like middling AIs, you know, middle piece weight. De Gaulle likes to build, like, to build wonders. Victoria's got the financial trait. It's like, no, Ragnar Alexander, boom. <laughs> I don't think Vicky's going to get 17 cities peacefully this time. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but this should be, this should be a fun game. I don't know if this is like by average um, average score. This is going to be lower. I know Link Mario Samus has been giving us that for these games. This is going to be a lower scoring game by like average um, power ranking, but it's going to be a fun game. <laughs> going to be a is it three zeros? Uh, is Alex zero as well? He's close to that. Um, this is definitely going to be three that are very low if they're not at zero. Yes, he is. Okay. Yeah, um, this could be interesting for Vicky. She's going to have a tough time making friends in this one. <laughs> Dane Law incoming. <laughs> this could be Justinian. He'll build up while the depraved leaders devour England. So, yeah, I mean, I think Vicky is the one who has the worst diplomatic situation. Zara at six is still not in great but situation, but he's more... Got more of a shot, at least. And anyway, thanks for subscribing, Rose. Appreciate it. All right, fun stuff. Thanks for popping in here. Okay, next game. We still got, what is it? We still got five more to draw. All right, so pool one. Still got some very powerful, very popular leaders sitting there in pool one. Who is it going to be for this game? One, Gilgamesh. Okay. Gilgamesh had a couple of really good seasons. Um, and then last year, he, didn't, he made it to the championship game two years in a row. Came close to winning. Um, and then last year he didn't have as good of a season, but the alternate histories showed that he was actually the strongest leader on his opening round match. He just, um, it didn't, he just got sent to the wildcard game because the actual game that played out, he didn't do as well, but, um, you know, alternate histories were like, Hey, this guy's actually really good. And he had another really dominant opening round. It's just, we saw one of the games where he didn't perform as well. Gilga Smash. Thanks for subscribing, Big Friendly Games. A lot of people subscribing. I know this is our most popular feature on the channel, so more people are popping in, and it's awesome you guys can pop in here. We're literally not even playing a game. We're just drawing names in Excel, and people are still getting excited. This is really fun. Okay, so Gilgamesh. 
low piece weight leader, but not an insane low piece weight leader. He seems to balance it a bit better. Let's see who he's going to be paired with here from uh, pool two. Oh, it's going to be fun if he gets Kathy. Four, he draws Mao. Okay, Mao is another one of what I think of as like the quintessential pool two leaders in the sense that he's not like economically strong enough to be in pool one or militarily dominant enough to be in pool one, but he's like always hanging around in these games. He has a lot of second place finishes. I do think of him as being somewhat like Surya Varman in that regard. Like Mao has been in the playoffs or the wildcard game almost every single year because there's like he either hangs around into the wildcard game or he just like sneaks out a second place finish. But he doesn't seem to make it to the championship game. It's just like he's good in the opening round, but he like can't quite cut it against the top tier leaders. So yeah, he's been second a lot. Well, um, thank you, Link Mario Samus. One first place finish, five second place finishes. He just hangs around. He's just like always there in the background. Um, and a lot of the time he just like sneaks into second place and moves on to the next round. Alrighty, so Gilgamesh Mao. I, I don't know if this is quite as much star power from the first two as some of these other games, but uh, it is two low piece weight leaders, so that could be interesting. All right, so we got we got to draw five more leaders from this unseated group. So let's go ahead and get started. Fifteen. We've drawn Peter. A bit of an underwhelming. What what is that? <laughs> you have a limited time to earn exclusive emotes. What is this happening now? Hype train. Oh boy, what is this? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not that familiar with all the Twitch stuff. I just do this for fun. Uh, it's not a uh, not like an income thing, but I appreciate subscribing, Tenacious Paste. Thanks for uh, adding that. Um, getting back to the actual draw here, it's an incentive for people to sub donate bits. Okay, cool, interesting. I I uh, do not spend as much time on Twitch. Um, as some of you might. All right. So yeah, Peter, another, I, I, I kind of feel like what not Spambot said, kind of like that uh, has not really stood out in any way. It's like, in theory, he's another one of these like militaristic leaders. Who's not, not as insane as like the Ragnars and Shakas of the world, but still does lean pretty heavily on military. He just hasn't really done that much in past seasons. He's been in the wildcard game a couple of different times. I do recall there was one game in the alternate histories where he was the strongest AI on the map, and that didn't actually happen in that game. So a little bit unlucky in that sense, but he hasn't really done that much. Um, do I collect anything? I honestly don't know. I'm afraid. <laughs> if you want to spend them, then spend them. Don't don't worry about me. Um this is just for fun. It's not a, as I said, it's not a money making thing for me. But if you, if anyone does want to donate, then I will put any donations towards um, number one, uh, maintaining the website because it does cost some money to keep the website up each year. And then number two, um, just stuff that improves the stream. Um, like I did buy a better microphone once, but um, then we, then the pandemic hit and then we started working from home. And uh, Liz now uses that microphone when she does her work from home. <laughs> so uh, anyway, but like anything that people donate, I will try to put towards um, stuff that's stream related, not just like use for pizza money for us. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So Peter, yeah, not the most interesting AI, kind of a blah individual. Maybe he'll break out one of these years, but we haven't seen it yet. Okay. So not that interesting of a game of a game so far. Let's see if we can get some more spiciness from these other leaders. Number 10. All right, we've got the Portuguese leader whose name I can't pronounce. Oh, by the way, thanks for the, the bit donations, you guys. I see that the chat thing is going crazy. <laughs> thanks for the donations. Appreciate it. All right, this is the leader whose name I can never pronounce, so we all frequently go with just J-Man. Yoao, Joao. I'm, so, I'm sure that I'm butchering the Portuguese, and I apologize for that. Unfortunately, as not Spambot said, this is kind of another boring leader. Um... This guy has the expansion traits. He's got expansive industry, uh, expansive imperialistic. So in theory, he should expand super fast, but he kind of doesn't. <laughs> he's just kind of mediocre. He doesn't really do anything all that interesting. He's been in the wildcard game a number of times, just kind of a blah AI, unfortunately. As Link Mario Samus said, his one win was in the all-time weakest field ever. So yeah. <laughs> I do not have any connections left with the Civ Dev team, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. that I did work there, but that was in 2005, and 2005 was 18 years ago. <laughs> uh, 
that's like some of you in the chat are probably like 18 so yeah that was a while ago <laughs> so i'm afraid i don't have uh any connections with them all right let's hope we can get some more interesting leaders this has not been the most spicy game so far all right who else do we get number 14 14 is oh boy <laughs> Another leader who's just kind of eh, not that interesting. Chin, Chin is a little bit. So we actually have double China in this game. That's kind of interesting, but um, he's a little bit like Mao in the sense that he often kind of hangs around. He is a, he's unfortunately an economic leader who has bad economic traits. What is he? Protective, industrious. They're just not very good traits for AI survivor. They're pretty mediocre to subpar. So like Chin kind of tries to play the econ game and he just doesn't really have the tools to do it, unfortunately. So he does like to build wonders. He'll probably get a decent number then because this is not a wonder building group. Um, if this game turns into just a total bloodbath, he actually could do well because he does try to stay out of wars. His um, aggression level is pretty low. But I will say, as far as this group looks, this is a pretty mediocre group so far. <laughs> Not the most impressive group. Um, so, yeah. Um... Maybe we'll get something more interesting for the last two. I mean, not every game is going to be amazing. There's usually one or two games each year where we're kind of like, all right, this is not the not the most dynamic field. And that just might be this game this year. Unless we get like Montezuma on one of the last picks. Let's see. 17. Uh, well, if you wanted an exciting group, this is not going to change that. Just got Sitting Bull here. I think Sitting Bull is probably the... If he's not the worst setup for AI Survivor, he's definitely in like the bottom five. He just, his setup doesn't make any sense. He's a peaceful leader with a high peace weight who loves to build military and then not use it. Um, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. It's just one of those AI combinations that's just ineffective. Some of the AIs have personalities that are really good. Like Mansa kind of stands out. Is like, yeah, he has the winner AI. He knows how to build his economy and he's really good at doing it. And then you have Sitting Bull. He's like, I'm going to choke my economy with military that I then don't use. Or you have uh, Tokugawa. I'm going to refuse to sign deals with anyone and then stifle my economy as an isolationist. It's actually good that the game has these personalities because it makes the game more interesting and dynamic. But some of the personalities just don't work <laughs> in the game. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Um, no one's going to die this game for protective AIs. Yeah, yeah, not, not the most interesting. So I don't know quite what to make of this game. Let's just draw the last leader and then move on to the... Next one. 18. Oh. Well, you guys wanted you guys said you wanted protective AIs, right? There's another one. Wang Khan. So I think we're just gonna call game four the protective game. Um Financial Protective, the Troll King strikes again. He might actually do okay in this game, in this field, because this is a kind of a weaker field. Five protective leaders in this game. That's that's really surprising that we have five out of seven in this one. Um, let's see, um, let's see, okay, this is internal to us, okay, sorry, this is a scheduling thing for us internally, this is not AI related, piece weight is balanced out a little bit, 1122688, interesting, aside from Gilgamesh, yeah, I don't, I really don't know what to make of this field, let's just put them in alphabetical order as usual. J-Man, Peter, uh, okay, and then these others are, actually only had to reverse the first two. Yeah, I don't know what to make of this game. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of protective leaders, an awful lot of protective leaders. This could be a game, this could be a game where, like, someone launches a spaceship on turn 370, because everybody's been warring nonstop the entire game. Average power rating only 12 point, yeah, that's quite a bit lower than some of these other ones. Anyway, thanks for the uh, hype train emotes. <laughs> emotes are being delivered to supporters. Awesome. That's quite, that's a lot. So this is definitely not as strong of a game as some of the other ones we've seen, but I suspect it'll be entertaining in its own way. All right, enough of the protective game. Let's uh, let's move on and look at the what we've got left here. Okay. No, I don't think this will be the first to die nobody game. I mean, maybe. It has happened in the alternate histories that we've had a no one die game. It's happened once or... I think it happened two or three times in the alternate histories. That's out of like 400 total games, but it has happened. Okay. Pool one. We have four leaders left. Huayna Kopek, Julius Caesar, Kublai Khan, <coughs> excuse me, and Pakal. 
And then in pool two, Kathy, Charlemagne, the Burger King, Cyrus, and Willem. <coughs> Definitely some big names still in the pool to be drawn. All right. So for game four, which one of these four are we going to see? Number three, Kublai Khan. All right. Another one of the leaders who is not on face value that impressive, but once again, it's just been in a ton of games. Um, kind of like a sneaky strong leader with the aggressive creative traits, um, but has a lot of first and second place finishes. Uh, he just has like a lot of finish top finishes and has been, uh, he's been in the championship game a bunch of times too. He came really close to winning the championship in, what was it, season, it was either season four or five. Um, I can't remember which one of the two it was. Yeah, two firsts and five seconds. Like that's a lot of, um, that's a lot of top finishes. Season four. Okay. It was the game where Willem first threw away the victory and then Kubla threw away the victory because he decided to go for a cultural victory for no reason when he was like three techs from the spaceship. Absolutely crazy. Um, so he really probably should have been a champion in one of the previous seasons and just always seems to do well. I like that. An upgraded Mao Zedong. I think that makes sense. I think he, he is kind of like a slightly better version of Mao. He's also been first to die twice. That's true. So there is the other side. He got a bad starting position last year. He kind of drew a bad seafood start and uh, didn't do a whole lot as a result. So paired with him in this game is going to be number three, Cyrus. Okay, they were in the same game last year, or opening round game last year as well. Cyrus, really good in season two. Came incredibly close to winning the championship in season two. Probably should have won. Wina Kopek snuck out a cultural victory at like the last second before he won. Uh, struggled a bit since then. Now, he had a good season last year. He made it to the championship game last year. But the alternate history showed that he probably should not have made it out of the opening round game. So he did get a little bit lucky. Had an amazing starting position in his playoff game last year. Um, and did really well in the playoff game as well. Only piece weight, piece weight three leader in the whole game. Interesting. All right, so once again, I wouldn't say that these are like two of the biggest names to be drawn into this game. So the field may be open for some of our unseated leaders here to, um, because this looks like and this might be another one of the games where the field's not quite as strong as some of the others. All right, who we got? 15, Roosevelt. All right. Another one of our peaceful builder AIs has not really stood out and done a whole lot up to this point in time. Uh, not one of our more interesting leaders. Definitely likes to stay in the corner and build wonders. Does not have financial trait, though, which is one of the reasons why he doesn't perform quite as well as some of the other builder AI leaders. Okay, next up, so we've got 17 pools, uh, unseated leaders to go. Number one, Ashoka. All right, well, that'll be good company for Roosevelt. They are very similar in personality, except that Ashoka is much more uh, religious-oriented likes to found religions and spread religion. Uh, also much more likely to go for a cultural victory. Roosevelt's probably going to win by spaceship if he wins, but Ashoka is probably going to win by culture if he wins. Um, yeah. So this is, again, a, a big split on the piece weight scale. The, these two are at the top of the scale. These two are definitely at the bottom of the scale. Ashoka has been a seated leader in the past, so is not that far off from being a pool two leader but um, has kind of tagged along with other better leaders in a couple of games, has maybe not been that impressive. Yeah, unfortunately, organized trade is not great under these rules. It's, but there's, I mean, it's just due to the way that the AI gets so many cost uh, discounts on deity, it's just not, not that great. All right, number three. Oh, Churchill. Well, we're getting kind of a blah group here again. Churchill had an amazing season last year. It was certainly his best season that he'd had. And he actually almost won the championship. Thank goodness he didn't. Um, the alternate history showed that he enormously overperformed in his playoff game and in the uh, championship game. Now, he did have a really good opening round game, largely because he had this great starting position with, like, floodplains and seafood tiles and gold resources right by his capital. So he had a good setup last year, but uh, outside of last year, he hasn't really done a whole lot thus far. I will say this game is, again, shaping up to be kind of blah. Um, <laughs> game four at least has the everybody's protective thing going for it. I don't really know what to make of game five. Uh, <laughs> the, the chat also doesn't seem too enthusiastic. I've noticed there's been less chatter about this game. People are kind of like, uh, I guess somebody's got to win. 
Uh, well, here's something that may, maybe makes it slightly more interesting. We've drawn Boudicca as the last leader. Um, Boudicca, of course, another one of the game's most aggressive leaders. Purely militaristic traits and aggressive charismatic. Uh, interestingly enough, will not declare war at please, though. Um, which is not something you'd expect, but one of her kind of weird quirks. She's done pretty well in past seasons, but she can't. She just can't compete with the economic leaders. The good news for her is there's not really any particularly strong econ leaders in this game. So I think she has decent odds in this match if she gets a decent starting position. Yeah, surprisingly decent balance of peace weights. So we've got, again, three high peace weights. I guess Churchill's more middling, but two high peace weight. Churchill kind of in the middle, but on the high side. And then Boudicca, Cyrus, Kubla kind of towards the bottom there. This could be a good game for her. It could be. It could also be a game where one of the peaceful leaders... I mean, like, this could be a good Ashoka game, too, if, like, he gets left alone and he gets to do his religious thing. Right, thank you for that. So, one, two, three, six, eight, eight. Yeah, pretty, pretty good split there. You got almost exactly 50-50 on the peace weights, so... An odd game, to be sure... But at least Boudicca maybe brings a little bit more excitement to it. All right. Three games to go here. We still have Wina Kopek and Julius Caesar to be drawn. We still have Kathy, Burger King, past champion, and Willem to be drawn here as well. And then in the unseated pool, who's really interesting? So we still got Genghis Khan. We still have Monty and Napoleon in here. And then we've also got some builder AIs like Elizabeth and Frederick. Um... And then Mehmed's a former... Isn't Mehmed, didn't he win the championship in Season 5? Somewhat undeservingly, but I believe he won that too. Yeah, Saladin and Tokugawa, so... Okay. Still have some leaders that we've had some interesting stuff with in the past. Yeah, kind of... I still can't kind of can't believe he won that <laughs> championship, but it did happen. All right. Not, I mean, he won a championship. He's not even in Pool 2. It's kind of sad. All right. Who is our Pool 1 leader? 1, 2, or 3? 2... Julius Caesar, still tied for the most kills in AI Survivor history, although Wina Kopak caught up to him last year. Didn't have a good season last year. Uh, he got stuck in a game with all high peace weight leaders and just couldn't get the ball rolling. It was in that game with Sitting Bull and Frederick and Pericles and Gandhi. Uh, he just couldn't get it going. And in the alternate histories, he couldn't get it going either. So let's see who he pulls for this uh, in this pool too. He would probably like to pull Kathy or Willem over Charlie for this one. Let's see which one he gets. Three, Willem. Okay. He's got Willem as his partner in this game now. That will put the game on a clock. So this is always, whenever Willem's in the game, I think this immediately has become an interesting game because we've got Julius Caesar, who's the quintessential warmonger, aggressive conquest leader, and Willem, who is the quintessential econ leader between the two of them. Anytime Willem is in the game, the question is always, will he research rifling tech? <laughs> will he research rifling tech? Yes or no? Because if he does, he often wins the game. If he doesn't, he often gets run over. Really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Willem, for God's sake, research rifling. <laughs> I will, of course, have to be rooting for um, Willem in this game because our baby son is named William. Um, we did not name him after the Civ 4 leader, but he does share the name with uh our little baby son so i'll have to be rooting for him that's that's why we've got the uh william uh icon in here the william sus uh <laughs> this was for this was when he was like one month old we got this picture of him <laughs> with this <laughs> sus expression on his face and turned it into an emote <laughs> all right so i'll probably be rooting for willem Let's see who else they get. Now, it'll be funny if Liz is in this game, too, because my wife is named Elizabeth. But, uh, yeah, we just have the whole family in this game. All right, who do we got here? Both low peace weight leaders. One, Brennus. Brennus is another kind of blah leader. He, By the way, we've hit number one in the random thing, I think, like three different times here in the unseated pool. Um, so he is, again, military plus religion. Another leader who doesn't declare war it pleased. Not that interesting. He's made it to the wildcard game a number of times. He's only been eliminated, I think, three times in six seasons. So he actually has not been eliminated that often. He's often, like, survived into the wildcard game and, like, not advanced from there. So, I don't know. Kind of a blah leader. Hasn't really done that much in past seasons. Another one of the leaders just kind of, like, hung around. <laughs> King of Disappointment. 
But I don't know. We'll see. Maybe he'll show us something. Look, it's pretty good for. Yeah, that's true. Um, two second place finishes is not terrible. Definitely more than some of the leaders have done up to this point in time. Next up with them is number 11, Saladin. Okay, another religious leader. I think Saladin has maybe done a little bit more than um, what we've seen from Brennus. I believe Saladin has a first place finish in one of these seasons. I think in a game that lasted like forever. Yeah, he's another one who has a similar setup as Brennus. Uh, religious plus military is kind of his thing. Uh, they both start with mysticism text, so they probably will found the game's first two religions, most likely. And then we have three more to go. <laughs> Salad man. I mean, he does have green borders. One first place finish. Thank you, Link Mario Samus. Seven. Ah, here we go. Another green bordered AI, Mehmed. So Mehmed, militaristic leader. Does not have the religious interest. Great starting text, great civ. The Ottomans are a great um, civilization. Got useful, unique unit, useful, unique building. The AI builds all the buildings anyway, so get an aqueduct that gives plus two happiness is quite nice. Wheel and uh, agriculture are great starting text. Kind of as underwhelmed, I think. I think he probably should have done better than he's done thus far. Obviously, he did win a championship, so, you know, we can only knock him so far. He has 10 out of 10 build units. Interesting. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Give us Monty. Monty's still in the pool. He still could be drawn. Game six is the green game. Yeah. Saladin and Nefmed so far. If we draw Monty, then it's really the green game. All right. Two to go. Who else is going to be in this match? Who do we have here? 10. Tokugawa. Let's throw an isolationist leader in here. Another low piece weight. Obviously, Tokugawa stands out for being the leader who won't sign open borders with anyone. Obviously, we have tech trading off for AI Survivor, but he won't trade techs with anyone either. He's just like the pain in the butt AI, just refuses to get along with anyone else. Um, so we've got a lot of military leaders in this game, like Julius Caesar, military. Brennus, military. Saladin, military. Mehmed, military. Tokugawa, military. He does have a science tech flavor, if I remember correctly. So in a game that's a low econ game, he can sometimes um, tech reasonably well. He can tech reasonably well. But Willem's in this game. So this game's going to go one of two ways. If Willem does not get into wars, he's going to just tech away and blow past this field. No one else in this game can research anywhere close to the degree he can. But if he gets roughed up a bit, um, it's really anyone's game. It's probably Julius Caesar's game because he's the best military leader out of this bunch. So we will be interesting to see. All eyes are going to be on Willem, I think, in this one. And who is our last unseated leader? One. It's de Oh, wow. Okay. <coughs> well, never mind. Now we've got another econ leader in the game in the form of Darius. Darius is badly out of place in this one. By the way, we rolled uh, the number one again in the unseated leader column. Randomness at its finest. Finest. So he is another leader that is just all tech, financial organized. The difference between Willem and Darius, though, is Willem has a low piece weight. He's four. Darius is a high piece weight. He's piece weight eight. Uh, he's going to have a major target on this back. Yeah. As Dr. Warklam just posted, zero one two four 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 eight. Ooh, mm, that's uh it's not it's not what you want it's not what you want it's not good bob it's not good uh so he's gonna have a major target on his back um <laughs> i don't know i suspect he's gonna be a popular pick for first to die but we'll see sometimes magically the high piece weight leaders managed to avoid getting dogpiled. We saw it in the championship game. Somehow Gandhi did not get dogpiled, despite um, despite being in a game that was mostly low piece weight leaders. I mean, he did get dogpiled in like 18 of the 20 alternate histories, but he didn't in the actual championship game. So, yeah, Darius was good news for Willem. Uh, very good news for Willem. Anything that draws aggression away from him, definitely good news for him. So, will like the Caesars and... Uh, meth meds of the world be able to conquer before Willem or Darius manages to tech away. It's going to be an interesting storyline for this game. More interesting, I think, than game five, definitely. And now we have the last two games. So for pool one, as soon as we draw the leader for game seven, we know who the leader is going to be for game eight. So Wynacopac is going to be in one of these games. Bacall is going to be in the other one. 
Who is it going to be in game seven? One or two? Two. All right. So we know what we've got. Pakal in game seven. And why not cop back? Not going to show himself until the very last game of the opening round. Yes. All the maps are drawn. They're all Pangea maps as usual. Yep. So you will not get to see Big Daddy Wina Kopak until the final game of the opening round. And as far as the pool two leaders, same thing. Kathy's going to be in one game. Burger King's going to be in the other game. So who's going to be in the game with Pakal? One. Kathy. Kathy's going to be in the game with Pakal. And then Charlemagne is in the game with Wina Kopak. Interesting. Interesting. <coughs> So we'll see how that plays out. So now we have to draw four leaders for game seven, and then the remaining five will be in game eight. So we already know how that's going to happen. <laughs> All right, out of the nine leaders remaining, who's going to join Pakal and Kathy? Two, Frederick, high piece weight leader, to go along with the two low uh, piece weight leaders that we've got there. So Freddie is an econ leader, very peaceful, high piece weight. I think he's eight, piece weight eight. In many of these games, he's been run over by the AI and been first to die. I think he's been first to die like four or five different times. Um, he did win his opening round game last year, though, because it was a very high piece weight field. <laughs> uh, or was it first or second? He got. I think he got first last year. Wasn't he on my fantasy team and he got a first? I can't remember, but I think he did well in the opening round. Last. Wasn't it Frederick Sitting Bull, the, the top two in game one last year? That's not going to ever happen again. Uh, all right, yeah, so, like, he tries to play the econ game, but his traits are just, like, not good enough to be an econ leader. He doesn't have financial, what is he? He's, um, what is he, like, organized? What, what are his two traits again? He's, like, organized and philosophical? Is that it? It's something like that? He just doesn't have good enough, organized, just doesn't have good enough, um, econ traits to keep pace with the yeah, organized philosophical that's it organized philosophical yeah those are just not that good unfortunately and especially they're not that good for ai survivor organized is a wonderful trait in a lot of other settings but it's not that good for ai survivor it's just like mediocre it's average and philosophical is downright bad for ai survivor because the ais all run a billion specialists anyway and they don't know how to use them intelligently so yeah he's just kind of a econ leader that's not good enough to keep pace with the real econ leaders all right, anyway, so next leader to draw, number three, Hattie. Oh, will this finally be the year? Hattie is the only leader who still has not scored any points in AI Survivor. Will this be the first year that she manages to get a top two? She's probably not going to get any kills is the thing. Oh, yeah, and Frederick is German, and Germany is a terrible Civ in, uh, in Civ 4 because all their stuff comes so late. It's just, like, pointless. Um, factory and tank unique things are, are bad. So that also hurts him too. Will this be the first year that Hattie scores some points? I mean, maybe she's got Freddie and Pakal's mostly peaceful too. Of course, Kathy's in this game. She might just be feasting on the rest of this field. All right. Um, where Napoleon ends up will be interesting too. Yeah. So who do we still have? Okay. We've got Elizabeth, high peace weight, very peaceful leader. Genghis Khan, <laughs> insane maniac. Montezuma, insane maniac. Napoleon, insane maniac. And then we have Louis, wonder builder. Ramses, peaceful wonder builder. Washington, somewhat militaristic high peace weight AI. This game is going to swing wildly depending on what these last two leaders are in, in this group. Will they draw one of the three? So there's three lunatics, Genghis Khan, Montezuma, Napoleon. Will any of them be drawn into this game? Great question. Number one, no, not so far. Elizabeth, another peaceful leader. Well, this is looking either Kathy is going to absolutely feast on this field or she's going to be ganged up on by all these high piece weight leaders. I guess Pakal also is a low piece weight leader, but he can play the econ game, whereas Kathy kind of can't. She really needs to go, get out on conquest spree. Imperialistic creative is not good enough to like keep pace with like Elizabeth on its own. Yeah, so uh, this game, I really think this game is going to swing heavily on who this last leader is. Is it going to be like Genghis Khan, Montezuma, Napoleon? If like Ramses is the last leader drawn into this game, that's not going to be so good for um, Kathy here. Yeah, Elizabeth would have a real chance to win. So, all right, it's a it's our straight one to six dice roll. Who is it going to be? And then all the other leaders will be in game eight. We've got three. 
<laughs> well, you guys were waiting for it. This is like we had that last pick and we just like picked up a grenade. We pulled the pin and we tossed that grenade right into the middle of the rest of the field. So yeah, you thought this game might be peaceful. Well, think again. It's not going to be a peaceful game because we've got the most insane AI in the game getting tossed in here into the final <laughs> setup. Montezuma, our last leader. All right, let's just put him in alphabetical order real quick. Elizabeth, Freddy, Hattie, and Monty. Now they all end. We can we can give them all a name that ends in Y here. All right. I don't know what to make of this game now. So we've got Pakal. You know, Pakal is starting to look pretty good in this game. If Monty and Kathy are just running around doing all sorts of insane stuff and Pakal just gets out to one of his uh, cultural games... He could slip under the radar because he's got that low piece weight. Yeah. Pakal's to lose now, potentially. <laughs> Kathy, or or maybe we maybe it's Kathy Monty tag team, and they just run over everyone else in the field. <laughs> that would be fun to see. Yeah, we almost got Napoleon Genghis Khan and Montezuma into one game. That was that would have that was close to happening. And, you know, it could have been Ramses or Washington drawn into this game. Would have been a completely different game if Ramses had been like the last leader, but it's not, so now we know who the last five leaders are going into this game. So just to give them their moment in the sun as well. Game eight, we're going to have Wina Kopak as the pool one leader, Charlemagne as pool two, so that's a high piece weight leader. Ramsey's in Washington also on the high piece weight side, but then Genghis Khan, Louis, who is pretty militaristic. He likes to build wonders, but he's also very low piece weight and, and, and does build a decent amount of military. Double France again. These two are both in the same opening round game. And then, uh, what is it? Genghis Khan, who is just completely nuts. Immense aggression and build unit emphasis. And Napoleon, who's basically the same thing. <laughs> 10 out of 10 build unit emphasis. Just go, 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 fight people. And, uh, and then Washington down here, who, as I said, is... Uh, High piece weight, but builds more military than your typical high piece weight AI. I think Wina Kopak is going to be a pretty big favorite in this field again, <laughs> as long as he can just do his normal thing. There is no one in this game that can keep pace with him economically, not even close. So if he can stay out of like two front wars, I think he's going to be pretty heavy favorite in that game. All right. Well, we've got the whole opening field set. So... Let me go ahead and let's take a quick look at our map for game one, shall we? Let's go ahead and set this up. So I'm going to slip this over to the desktop so you can just see everything. And uh, the way we set this up is we have to uh, text edit the world builder save file. Uh, now, some of you have seen this before, but for those who haven't, uh, here we go, world builder normal. And I have to get the save game file, which is under my games, beyond the sword, uh, saves, and then world builder. And here we go, survivor seven, one. And we're gonna open this up with notepad. So this is something that you can do. You can open up the save file here in uh, notepad. And then you can do editing stuff that you can't always necessarily do with the in-game world builder. Um, the in-game world builder is quite good, but there is some additional stuff that you can do here. All right, so who are our actual leaders? So we have Stalin. So we, all right, so Stalin is person one. So we have to put in Russia's text here. Stalin, uh, Russia, where's, oh, Russia's, uh, that's right. It's not purely in alphabetical order. I have them grouped together. Hunting and mining for Russia. So we get rid of all the free bonus deity texts. All right, Russia first. And then Hammurabi. So this is agriculture wheel. I don't even need to look that up. I know most of the starting techs, um, particularly everyone who gets Agriculture Wheel, because in multiplayer uh, Civ, you really need to know the starting techs. All right, who do we have next? Uh, oh, wait, I did that wrong. It was Gandhi was in the second position. Whoops. Gandhi is in the second position. So I got to shift that down to here. This is Hammurabi. Also, it's Agriculture, not Agriculture. And we need Gandhi's Mining Mysticism for that second slot. I would have messed that up. Here we go. I suspect chat was on top of that. Okay, so next person is Isabella, Spain on a lake, that's fishing and mysticism. Spain is the only one who starts with that tech combo. It's not a particularly good combo, 
but it is unique. Dates back to the original Realms Beyond Succession game for Civ 4. All right, Pericles, Greece, that's fishing and what else? Uh, hunting. Not shared by many civs. And our last leader is Shaka. Shaka is uh, agriculture hunting. Where is the Zulus? They're the same as Persia, aren't they? Yeah, here we go. Agriculture hunting. It's sad that I have these mostly memorized, but I have I have spent a lot of time playing Civ 4. Okay, now Gandhi is in this game, so we can't be Gandhi anymore. Um, we have to be a different leader now that um, Gandhi is actually in this game. So I will change us over to, uh, let's be Zara instead, because he's last in the alphabet. And he is not in this game. All right. Here we go. But we do want to be Survivor 7 game one. Okay, so now we need to put in the actual leaders. So first up was Stalin. Let's grab Stalin. These are in alphabetical order. And hopefully I will not break anything in the game in doing this. All right, so we're just replacing this, just replacing all the text. All right, so we've got Stalin for Russia. Next up, Gandhi was second, right? Gandhi, so now I have to put Gandhi back in. Where is he? Up here, here we go. All right, so far we have red borders and the light purple borders of uh, India, so that's no conflict yet. All right, leader number three was who? Hammurabi. We might need to change his colors, but that's probably distinct enough from Gandhi that we're okay. Color is middle purple. You can see sometimes how this stuff is coded and it's kind of amusing. So Gandhi is player color. India is player color purple. Babylon is middle purple over there. <laughs> Please change game being played to notepad. Yeah, I know, right? Sorry, I can't do this ahead of time because I didn't know who was going to be in the game until we just drew this. All right, Isabella. Let's grab Izzy with her pink borders. Gets spot number four. All right, next up we have Pericles. Okay. Pericles. All right, here we go. Light blue. After Isabella. And our last leader is Shaka, who can keep his default. We often turn Shaka red, but the yellow is fine here. The only one I would want to shift is um, Hammurabi, but I think it's okay. I think him and I think that the Babylon and um, India borders are separate, are different enough, distinct enough that it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, I think we're I think we're okay there. Maybe I could turn him to a darker purple. That would actually, actually, let's do a, a, just a darker purple. Um, I'll give him Gilgamesh's color because that's a slightly darker version of the same thing. And that shouldn't look too weird. Here we go. Dark indigo is the uh, official color here. All right. Boop. Let's save this. Hopefully I didn't break anything. We will find out shortly if I did. So... Uh, let's go ahead. Oh, I skipped a line. I missed the line for Izzy, people are saying. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Well, let's make sure I fix that so it doesn't just crash out. Izzy. Where did I miss a line for Izzy? Must have screwed up the cup, cut and paste. Uh, well, we'll just copy paste it again. I trust you guys if I missed something. Okay, it would have crashed out if it was uh, if it was wrong. Hopefully that fixed it. <clears throat> yeah, Sitting Bull will be in a game. All right, and now we'll boot up Civ 4. And let's take a look and hope that hopefully it worked correctly. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so for this, we have to do the custom scenario. 
all the survivor save files from past seasons, 7 1. All right, here we go. Survivor 7, game 1. If we did this wrong, the leader will not load in, but we it looks like it went correctly. All right, let's just check the settings. So on Deity, they all have their civs listed there. We've got the normal speed, temperate, medium. All right, so on the options, all victory conditions are turned on. Uh, we have aggressive AI, which is what we want. Choose religion, no tech trading, no tech brokering. Not no no random personalities. Random personalities is fun, but we then we the, then like you can't keep track of the same personality year to year. All right, no vassal states, no tribal villages, no random events. Looks good. All right. So, oh, he actually starts with mining. That's right. We can just start researching. Bronze working right from the start. I'm so used to playing as a uh, Gandhi who has to research. Yeah, from the start. All right. So first up. Put it in debug mode. All right. Yeah, that, that color should work. That should be distinct enough. Uh, so we have to advance. That's right. That's right. Gandhi had to start. Never mind. You're right. Gandhi starts with mining tech too. What am I thinking? Is this showing up okay on screen? So let them all plant their cities. And let's see what we've got here. All right. Well, well, well. So where is everybody starting? Okay. So Stalin has the center. By the way, I don't know where everybody is either because I did generated these maps, but you know I didn't know who would be where. So it's a relatively small uh, continent for this game. So Stalin's got the center position. It's the mid-central position here. Uh, Gandhi has the northeast corner is where he is starting. Pericles is... Okay, Gandhi and Pericles are next to each other. That's going to help them out. Um, they are also next to Shaka and Stalin, though. Over here is Hammurabi. This is not Gilgamesh. This is Hammurabi. We changed the color, remember? And then Izzy's in the northwest corner here. Plains Cow. Who is the one with the Plains Cow? It's Gandhi. Yeah, but look. He has one, two, three, four. His five, um, his five floodplains tiles. Six floodplains tiles. Yeah. He has, uh, like, I thought Plains Cow was fine because this starting position is six floodplains. Um, it's all going to ride on what religion flips to Stalin. Interesting. All right. So we have to do, finish doing the rest of the setup, right? There are still some couple minor things we have to do. Have to debug in the great spies, which have always been controversial. There's, I know people at Realms Beyond who have complained every single year about the great spies. I don't care. It lets us view the, um, the, the, the demographic, uh, charts. I'm aware that it does throw things off a little bit, but I don't really care. Um, <laughs> it's my competition. I can set it up the way I want. Um, it's just for convenience. It makes it easy to keep track of what's going on in the game. So that's why I do this. I don't really care if the AI decides to run 10% on the espionage spider. Um, people have said that be, there, there have been some people that said, and, and they're not wrong. I want to make it clear. They're not wrong. The AI sometimes um, wants to run on the espionage slider because they see themselves as being in this huge EP deficit to the observer sieve. And that can throw things off a little bit. They're not wrong about that. I just think it's really minor. And I, I think that the convenience of being able to see everybody's graphs makes up for that. So we have to do this and it is, I mean, it's exactly the same for everybody, but some of the AI personalities do react differently than others. All right, so we've got the great spies in. Next up, we need to make sure that the barbarians have, uh, was it archery tech? Need to make sure they have that so they can spawn, or that, what is it? We have to, yeah, we have to make sure they have archery tech so that they spawn with um, archers in their barbarian cities. Otherwise, they just have warriors, which we don't want. And diplomacy mode, we need to make sure everybody loves the observer sieve. And then that's the last edit we have to make. Where's the happiness on this map? All right. Uh, just the check to make sure everybody loves the observer. Boom. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to save this. And then this will be our starting save game file. Okay. So let's go ahead and just zoom out real quick. Somebody said, where's the happiness? Uh, here's the happiness resources on this map. Um, again, I try to edit these maps as little as possible. I will make sure everybody has access to at least one metal resource in the early game, but sometimes that's going to be iron, and sometimes they do such a lousy job of settling they don't end up getting to it. So, you know, 
sometimes things don't always work out perfectly for the AIs. All right, so just to give you again the starting positions, um, I will screenshot all this later. I will have the written previews. I'll be working on them today. I will try to get them all to, done today. I don't know if I'll have all of them done today, but I'll be working on them and get them up on the website. And then the, I'll record a video preview for this game too. Um, the game itself is not happening for three weeks, so you'll have tons of time to get the predictions in for the picking contest, but I'm going to try to get that set up uh, as quickly as possible for people. All right, so again, this is the starting position for Stalin. Pool 2 leader Gandhi is over here. Does have uh, copper nearby. We'll see if he decides to settle. It does have Riverside Gold nearby. Is there a food resource? There's no food resource to pair with this, but there is a Riverside Gold. Down here. I guess there's some floodplains tiles over here. Other leaders, Pericles. Dry corn, horses, gold tile at the capital, not too shabby. Um, where's this metal resource? Oh, there's iron down here. So he does have iron. If eventually he'll be able to get that. Um, Shaka has iron that he'll have at the capital. I mean, his capital's off third ring borders by the time he gets iron working. Iron on a grass. I guess iron can spawn on a grassland hill tile. Um, I would not have edited this in. This would have had to have around popped up naturally. There is a, a uh, gem style, but it's under jungle, so we'll need iron working for that. Nice little backlines area down here with some good resources. Hammurabi has a wet rice, uh, and then double cattle resources, cows and um, horses at the capital. A lot, fair amount of jungle tile. He does have a lot of forests and jungles around him, though. The AI sometimes struggles with that. And then Izzy has floodplains tile, wet. Okay, she has a wet corn. And then uh, some good animal husbandry stuff, horses and sheep. And then we'll see where she goes to expand. Uh, I'll be curious to see who expands into this spot. There's actually not, and like over here, there's a little bit more room here, but there's really only room for one city between these two. Yeah. There have definitely been some years where people just refuse to hook up copper. Okay. All right, so I will get the, I will work on the previews and the picking contest stuff tonight, and I'll try to get that redone ASAP. Um, but yeah, I will, I will do this for all the other games as well. We'll have all the opening round games ready. And uh, those of you who are in the fantasy contest, there's eight of you who are in the fantasy contest. You guys have two weeks. To think about what your bidding strategy is for the fantasy contest. And then we'll uh, do our fantasy auction two weeks from now. It should be fun. So um, yeah, we'll be back for that. Next week, I don't know what we'll be doing, but in two weeks, we've got the fantasy auction. And then in three weeks on April 7th, Game one begins, so it should be fun. All right, that's going to be it for the A, the uh, leader draw session. Now we're going to switch over, and we're going to try to finish the Civ War game we've been playing, which is with uh, Abraham Lincoln and the Emancipation Adventure.